example. So NCT's going into this. Obviously, he's seen him play in GSL. Yes, he yeah, knows yeah. how he plays in those games, but he doesn't know what he's like. What are his styles like? What can he abuse? Uh, what, what are OGS Top's weaknesses? He doesn't know that, and that's going to be obviously key going into this game. So, without any further ado, let us go into game one of Group B action today here at DreamHack 2010. Let's just give a cheer for this wonderful tournament for the great folks at DreamHack who have made this all possible. And here is game one between NTT and OGS Top playing under the ID Rays. The first match will be on Zellnaga Caverns. If you're a fan for your Dutchman NTT, give a cheer. And if you are a fan of OGS Top, who's flown all the way from Korea to be here, please make some noise. So it looks like NTT. <laughs> <laughs> NTT in the top right as the blue Terran. In the bottom left, we have OGS top as the red Terran. Now, I will say Terran versus Terran is, I would say, the most volatile matchup that we've seen. It's gone through some of the most significant changes. It even looks like NTT is making sure that there's no goofiness going on at the south end of his base, sending an early SCV, but ooh, ooh a little bit of nerves getting to him accidentally, misrallying that SCV. In the early days of the beta, it was all about Vikings and tanks, and as a result, as time progressed, the game became all about Marauders, and then eventually now the Marine is one of the core units in this matchup. And once it finally passed that into today's style, it is pretty much anyone's game. Yeah, and I remember in the beta back in the day, um, it, like you were saying, you never used to make Marines. You were considered dumb if you made Marines in TVT, and now it's actually so dependent on Marines throughout this matchup. But yeah, with this, yeah. this I probably suspect both players to kind of go for a 1-1-1 one, one, one kind of play. 1-1-1 yeah. uh, one, one, one being obviously barracks into factory into starport, as Banshees have been used so much recently in TVTs because they have such high DPS and obviously if you get the cloak out or you have to the thing with top players when they have an orbital command they are never going over the required amount of energy for a mule so if oh, you actually yeah. sneak in a banshee with cloak oh my god it's the worst thing in the world to play against true there are few worse feelings than when you call down a mule and giggle to yourself saying I hope no one knows that Terran's actually imbalanced and then two seconds later <laughs> a banshee appears and you curse in whatever language. And we, of course, do have many different people from many countries today. So we will have all sorts of rage getting induced by that great unit, the Banshee. And I will admit, I love what NTT is doing here because look what happens with Top. He gets into this base, and what does he see? Just a refinery, no racks. Oh, OGS Top is so smart. What I love so much about NTT's play is that he hid something normal in his base mm. and it would perhaps convince his opponent that there was cheese could maybe thrown down an early bunker but top a little too good for that and exactly as you said looks like both players are going for somewhat of a fast factory yeah they are going to put it down that's what a lot of players have been doing especially because they really do enjoy using the banshees they actually get the refinery before the factory but in this case both players are going for the factory first uh ntt not actually having scouted what is going on inside of uh, Top's base. He has got the control of the Zell Naga Towers. And actually, that is such a key point throughout oh, yeah. this game, especially in TVT, is controlling the middle of the map. Because TVT is always, even in Brood War, used to be, always be about positional play. And uh, when you control both these towers, you can actually just place on the left and right hand side of the map where you have mm -hmm. these expansions. You just place a supply depot on a turret, and you can actually cut the map in half and see everything. Oh, and here's some very cool play by NTT, going for the surround, but it looks like Top will end up pulling back in time. Now, so far, I've been very impressed with NTT's early game play, playing extremely smart, very, very mobile with his early force of units, even though they both have the same set of units produced. NTT has more map control, is pushing more aggressively. Tanks coming out now for NTT. Both players do have two gas geysers, but NTT's was quite a bit later. NTT continuing just to produce tanks and marines, but it looks like a very fast starport coming up from top. Yeah, the starport has been put down for top. We'll have to see what he does with this exactly. If he is going to go, well, it depends. Will he go for siege mode uh, with his next 100 gas? He does have 100 now. Uh, is he going to go for it? Um, we, well, he hasn't done anything yet, so that might entail that he is going to be using the starport more than the factory itself. Uh, over in NTT space, he has actually chosen to go on for siege mode. 
Wow, it looks like NTT's gearing up for a very big push. Uh-oh, it looks like uh, we do see Top trying to pull back an SCV right now, trying to do some scouting, but again, NTT so mobile, and here's the switch. Mm. Looks like Top is trying to stay in a little bit of defensive mode, but then wants to get that very fast Raven. There's a very interesting choice, and this is exactly what NTT needs to make this push work. He is getting huge numbers of tanks and Marines, getting a second barracks, really committing to this one base play, and this Raven is really not going to help out much at all. No, I mean, usually you get a Raven to help fight against the Vikings and uh, obviously Marauder shots, but that's not going to help out at all. And I love the timing that Top had on that. The way that he actually got a tank out first, and then as soon as the tank finished, he switched it over, oh, then yeah. made the Raven, and then now is actually going for an expansion. Uh, and another base of NTT is actually getting an engineering bay, kind of fearing the Banshee player. As we look at his vision, NTT's vision, he still actually has not seen anything from uh, OGS Top's base. Now, I think this is actually a very smart response by NTT. In general, you see some sort of push early, but if you've seen nothing, you start to get real suspicious and start to feel a lot more vulnerable to that sort of Banshee. So NTT throwing that uh, very key turret plus Viking down turrets because they can see farther than they can shoot. You get the Viking out to be able to clean those Banshees in your base up. And in the meantime, Wow, I would really say that Top is in a very awkward position if NTT chooses to push a little bit sooner. And NTT is clearly in a little bit of all-in mode, favoring this really fast stim. Again, Marines are that new key unit in this matchup, so he's trying to get as many of those as possible. Yeah, he has four Marines queued up, which is a slight mistake. Uh, I'm pretty yeah. sure as soon as the reactor is made, he's just going to cancel them and build them on the reactor. But if this expansion goes up for long enough, if NTT doesn't do anything about it. His economy, uh, OGS Top's economy, is just going to pull full too far ahead. The problem is that to fight against all these Marines, you really do need Siege Mode. So we are to actually, sorry, as I say that, it is going to be completed soon. And if he gets good position on it, that's going to be vital. And NTT, for the first time, scouting OGS Top and does see the expansion goes down. And what is his reaction to this? Uh-oh, looks like NTT's gearing up for a little bit of a push of his own. NTT, who favored that very fast Siege Mode, didn't really get to make use of it. Top, who favored the later Siege Mode, now setting up tanks right there. And this might actually be a big break for NTT. He's been making so many Marines and tanks, it would be very hard to pierce Top if Top were up on this high ground, but now with the expansion out, Top is in a, quite a vulnerable position. Oh no, and a slight blunder by NTT, he's actually supply blocked at 59, having to cool down energy to increase the supply depot, and that's not something you really want to be using your energy on this kind of uh, situation, but it looks like uh, Top is in quite a comfortable position, this Viking has landed and is going to do a little harassment on the bottom of the base, he is going to, no, he's actually just using it for scouting purposes, I think, uh, just waypointing back and forth, not going to move in. But uh, he's like, lol, he's like, oh, look, I'm actually going to kill an SCV with a Viking on the ground. And it looks like at the same time, uh-oh, Vikings moving through the middle, spotting this meta back. There's the stim. Oh, no, big wasted stim right there. Accidentally stimming twice on some of the units, so most of them have absolutely no health at all. These siege tanks are going to rip through this oh. NTT. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh! oh. That is oh. crucial. He loses so many Marines. He, he is, he, well, he has got the combat shield in production. Does not wait for it, and especially because of that stim, completely missed anything. And now only has one medivac and is being forced to move back. But at the same time, we look at the unit counting tab. Uh, all, actually, I thought it'd be a lot different. Uh, SCVs aren't actually that much far from each other. Uh, the only difference being that the orbital command has been put down for quite a while. Therefore, mill mules are in production for OGS top. Now, the one thing to note, we see that OGS Top has only just started STEM, yet meanwhile in NTT's base, he has finished both the STEM and the Combat Shield upgrade. We see a second engineering bay going down as well, so we will have plenty of uh, upgrades coming up, or, you know, plenty of ability to make missile turrets. And this could be very key. If NTT can pinch this off at a good angle, the tanks have not been sieged yet. NTT's in a good spot. There goes down the tank fire, and these Marines of NTT are cleaning up doing huge amounts of damage, but these tanks just do way too much, and Top has managed to break this little force of NTT at the front. Oh my god, he can actually just move up right now and contain NTT. He lost all his army. The choice to actually not siege, I thought, oh my god, is he is OGS Top making a mistake? But no, his choice was actually to keep them unseized. As when they unseize, they actually attack a lot faster and have a lot of uh, hits coming in and just cleaned it up super fast, especially against the Marine can and done a lot of damage and now he's in great position. Uh, I don't know what his reaction now is going to be. Is he going to take a third or is he going to try and contain it? He is going to move back. Taking a third now is probably the best idea for OG Top.
Yeah, it's, a, it's actually a, quite a difficult position for Top to be in. Even though he's killed off so many Marines for NTT, I mean, look at this production of Marines by NTT, just having to pour out of his bases, getting a little bit of reactors as well, so that way he can continue to be aggressive and get those medevacs out and do drop tech. Because Marines do so much damage, this means that Top needs to have the tanks in just the right position every time. If these tanks are in the wrong position just once, that could be potentially game ending. And it looks like um, NTT is going pretty well. He has got the double engineering bay down, getting plus one, one uh, for weapons and armor for his infantry. Uh, the armory being put down too, and it looks like the timing of it will be ready for plus two. Uh, and that's quite a lot because on the other hand, if we look at OGS top space, he really doesn't have any upgrades and doesn't feel like he needs it. Uh, it looks like they are both players are gearing to get uh, ready to take this goal. And I love the supply depot placement in the top left uh, for NTT. Yeah, this is very clever supply depot placement. Going to be able to spot so, so much. And there's the Vikings moving forward. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Will he be able to siege up any tanks in time? Very smart play by NTT, pulling back to get a better concave. But Top is leapfrogging those tanks very effectively. Takes his rage out on the destructible rocks. And that was a huge mistake, mistake from NTT. He actually had the siege tank. The one siege tank he had there holding that location was still firing at the rocks whilst oh. Top moved up so that it didn't do any damage and it just made Top clean that out so fast. And it looks like he is going to be setting up a containment outside of Entity's base, or even just going straight for the kill. Oh my god, look at how fast these tanks are leapfrogging forward. And there's the stim to try to run around. Oh, it did not go as expected. And there is the good game. Top manages to take another win in his group. And NTT is eliminated in last place as 0-3 but not without putting up a very strong fight. That's an extremely tough style to break. The very mobile mass marine plus medevac style, but Top just had such crisp placement of those tanks. I know, and like I said before, TVT is all about placement. And the